welcome. It is time to light a big candle of hope. It's a small world after all. And this is concerning prophecy and it's a much smaller world if the world would only believe the truth of Pat Robertson. These are the days when Mickey and many are declaring that festering fears and tears have been all over us. So it's time to lift up the world unto all people because this is what is at stake if people will not believe the inspired truth of the founder of the 700 Club. He was totally misunderstood. Now for those that do not know who Mr. Pat Robertson is, he is the founder of the 700 Club. And at the age of 91, he has come out of retirement to give a word of warning, not to scare people, but to enable people to perhaps be able to be armed enough by God's truth to bring forth a different future so that the Lord can cut these days short. Now, what is behind the veil of Israel and Armageddon in these last days? It is exactly as uh, Pat says, and it is China and Russia. And in the end, that is the destination of millions of Chinese as they cross the Euphrates River, according to the word of love and Russia. So love from love, and I hope that you will hear the defense of Pat Robertson, because anyone that has, with malice, attacked him because he declares that Putin has been compelled, have no leg to stand on, and you will agree if you hold your horses a bit. So love from love and hope from hope and peace from peace unto all people of love that's willing to learn the ways of war no more. For we can never learn how to live together in peace by killing each other's children. For concerning the embrace of our Prince of uh, Peace's greatest wisdom, some will and some won't and some do and some don't, uh, they, some don't want nothing to do with his peace. And this is such a shame that in this age that the obsolescence of war is not fully recognized as nothing but a self-destructive killing machine uh, that has nothing to do with peace. So uh, these are the days that we can, uh, we have to beat our swords into the sickle of love. And uh, in these days of Russia and uh, China flexing their muscles along with Iran and along with North Korea, it is freedom versus communism in this world. Dictatorships, slavery versus freedom. Um, and know that all warmongering, hateful fools do not really believe that war settles nothing, nor, nor do they understand that war is as much a punishment unto the punisher as it is unto the sufferer. sufferer. So please try to understand that the biggest misunderstandings like, like uh, Pat Robertson has just experienced are always born from ignorance of God's love and of his ways, his ways of peace alone. For there's nobody more foolish than anyone condemning people like Mr. Robertson uh, about his faith and the Bible's end-time prophecy, so that the world at this point now owes all the criticism that has been thrown to Pat over this, now owe him a huge apology at least 700 times uh, for that recently condemned 
televangelist. Uh, his words were taken all out of context as multitudes jumped all over that 700 club founder of many blessings in this world, Mr. Pat Robertson, for no reason at all other than their own ignorance, because he was absolutely correct concerning Vladimir Putin's bloodthirst. That has been prophesied in Jeremiah 54, I believe, Daniel 12, and uh, Rasputin, <laughs> the prophet, predicted the assassination of Putin. Uh, being the cat. Uh, the cat would chase the rats, the rats would become mice and eat the cat. And the way that the, the rats become mice is by believing God's word of mercy. There is, it is witchcraft to be fearful of prophecy because that is disbelieving God's mercy that endureth forever. Uh, and for that reason, Jesus said, in Matthew 24, 22, that unless these days were cut short, no flesh could survive. And the way it's going to be cut short is probably through Putin's uh, assassination. I wish that upon no man. But at this point, I don't think I would be able to shed too many tears. So know that at the age of 91, Pat Robertson has now correctly warned the world uh, last week by saying in his words, that the Ukraine invasion is simply a staging area for even greater end times battle that will eventually take place in Israel. People, Russia is the great bear of uh, Daniel 7, 5, chewing on three ribs before hearing the words, now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like. Those three ribs it's chewing on are the three annexed uh, Ukraine pieces of Crimea and the last two uh, that he has just been chewing on now. And he is undisputably the king of the north of Daniel 11, who has gone in and over uh, invaded the king of the south. As foretold, he will go back to the Kremlin, back to Moscow. He will lose go back, finish the job, and then it would be off unto Armageddon. A time, times, and a half a time is the vision of Daniel 11 and 12, which run together. And so know that uh, Pat is not trying to make people fear at all, for out of his own mouth he says that he has always had a zero tolerance for sacrimonious morons who tries to scare people. Prophecy has never been told to tell the future, although it does that too. It has been told to change the future. Uh, for it was written in the book of Jonah that God told Jonah to tell the people of Nineveh that they will be destroyed in 40 days. And God relented and changed his mind, the word says. And for that reason, it is written in the word of God this will be considered in the latter days. It says so in Jeremiah 30, 24. It says that people will consider the truth that the Lord God Almighty, who is our all-beneficent one, that he will return his most terrifying anger. And this is part of the problem. People don't understand God's wrath and God's love. But one thing is for sure, that former presidential contender, uh, he has been most wrongly attacked by lots of cruel words after he stressed the absolute truth that just as the Lord once hardened the, the Pharaoh's heart. Now, did he actually harden the guy's heart? No, the guy uh, hardened his heart all on his own, but it caused lovelessness to that Pharaoh. And so, too, has he hardened that manifested Russian king, Putin, the last czar of uh, Daniel's World War Z, World War III prophecy, the king of the north of Daniel 11. So uh, Pat Robertson said that um, he has been compelled by God to do this thing. Yes, he has. He has put a hook in the, the man's mouth. But is that in his will to go and attack another? Absolutely not. This is just a misunderstanding of what Pat 
was trying to get across. So understand that such darkness is now compelling him. Lovelessness, darkness of lovelessness, is what is compelling uh, him, uh, Putin, into the most insane suicide that always comes forth by the scorching dawn of stone-melting nuclear fission gone awry. For Pat was actually quoting Ezekiel 38 when he said that the Lord was compelling him into war, which was not the Almighty's will at all, for his spirit of love falls away. Uh, as that happens, as his spirit of love falls away from that dictator's lovelessness, it is that action uh, in the spirit that is causing Putin's heartlessness to move him and his people towards the foretold nuclear fires of the prophesied thermonuclear war that Zechariah 14, 12 foretold. And so people, it is time to understand that the essence of what he was declaring was exactly the utter uh, truth. And for that reason, uh, people now need to come to understand that these are most important days, for it is prophesied in World War III prophecy that China is going to become involved in this huge World War Z in a huge way. So keep your eyes closely upon North Korea, uh, Iran, Iraq, and uh, Russia, and China, uh, because all of this is not in accordance with God's will, but he has foreseen it all, for he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and his spirit of prophecy is all only telling us what will happen if we do not beat our sword into the sickle of love so that we can learn the ways of war no more. So in this hour, this is the time that God has put a hook into that KGB criminal's jaws, just as Ezekiel 38 declares. And he is bringing him forth into the latter-day predicted world war of Daniel 11, along with his army, navy, and his air force. Uh, for in these days of Elijah, that madman's tanks have horsepower that's far greater than a herd's strongest team of horses ever was. And that prophecy of World War Z predicted that all of his soldiers would be clothed in full armor and that they would be a great company with buckler and shield and all of them would be handling weapons like the sharpest swords that can so easily cut spirits right out of their souls. And that foretold end time, um, it, it says that it would lead them right up until the great battle of slaughter that Gregory Rasputin foretold unto the Russian people, um, when over one million people strong would be instantly vaporized, as the Bible so clearly predicts. Uh, those slain will be instantly consumed away, the Bible says in Zechariah, as they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall also be vaporized within their sockets, as their tongues instantaneously consumes away within their mouths. Uh, and Pat Robertson was also 100% correct about his geography, uh, his observations thereof, uh, for he emphasized uh, the warning that if Ukraine fell, that would link up Putin's Russian forces up towards Turkey across the little land bridge, and those lands would become would come together. And Robertson additionally, with great wisdom, explained that if anyone looks down into North Sudan, there's a Muslim country down there. And there they are, there they all are. And Persia, he said, of course, is Iran. Um, and as he said, and uh, Pat, he used a map as he brought a spotlight over the choke point, as he, as he phrased it, that does exist between Turkey, Bulgaria, and Greece. 
Uh, and then he stated that this choke point would soon become some of great interest unto China. So let all the axes of all the evil countries uh, aligned uh, as the axis of evil uh, with Russia. And China is there too, people. Uh, the sleeping dragon is going to rise. Um, so people all need to listen to Pat's word and understand that this he was only voicing what the Bible predicts. So it was not of his own uh, um, miscalculations. It's uh, the, the, the criticism is over people's misunderstanding of what he was saying only. For the truth is that uh, people don't have to be deaf anymore unto the obvious realities. For the glory of Vladimir Fr friggin' Putin, the pulverizer of humanity's innocence, only comes at the most bloody crimson cost of many innocent sheep being needlessly slaughtered mercil mercilessly. Uh, and so in these days of love's greatest glory revealed by our, the whisper of our pure, purring Lion of Zion, he is now declaring, the Lord says that Putin's false bastardized Jesus uh, of death, the false Christ that he worships, um, he is a, a, a Jesus of war, a Jesus of death. Uh, and he is a, a false Christ who would be willing to forgive that unloving Russian KGB czar of the unforgivable sin that he has committed, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, of the whitest dove of love, for he has let his love die right out. That And there is no forgiveness from the true Lord of love. He cannot forgive that. So know then that Russians, Russia's president is clearly one of the biggest assholes of hatred's worst loveless racism. Uh, but most ironically, Vladimir, he was also raised by a devout, loving Christian mother. And for that reason, Putin has worn uh, an ignored crucifix, not understood ever by him fully, uh, for most of his life. And that man openly also identifies himself as a follower of the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, and believe me, he's following a different Jesus than the Russian Orthodox Church. Even though uh, he follows, says that, even though the whole country of Russia is officially secular. And by Putin's loveless brand of faith, he believes that the very same foolishness of unloving deceived people. Uh, he believes that uh, that is what he will hear on the day of judgment. He'll be hearing the Lord telling, like he says to many, I don't know you, get away from me, depart from me. Uh, because uh, people like him have totally unplugged uh, themselves spiritually from the Lord's everlasting goodness of love as they've allowed their love to wax totally ice cold. And as far as that madman of the Soviet sickle and hammer is concerned, Putin says that his ugliest brand of Christianity, and this is his words, he sees Moscow as a third Rome. Uh-oh, here we go with another uh, Third Reich. <laughs> Oh my God, these are his words. That's the scary part. Um, that Moscow is as a third Ro Rome. And in his delusions, he sees Moscow as the greatest seat of the of true Christendom. And he sees himself as the Antichrist. Uh, after uh, uh, the true seat of Christendom, Moscow, after C Constantinople, and the Roman Empire, said Vladimir in his words. And by his delusion of imagined Nazi deceptions that he's now spreading through propaganda all over Russia, um, uh, this is causing foolish followers of his to believe all of this crap. Uh, they're just totally not in the know. They have no understanding. And such brainless sheep shall then inherit the kingdom of hell upon earth, one way or another, as another hell is shoved right up Russia's ass. 
for all those who live by fire shall die by fire and uh, are, shall evermore be hopeless because they all receive the glass of peace upon earth as only half empty instead of half full. So remember well the resounding words of Winston Churchill. For it's most true that Vladimir Putin knows that he will have to break NATO forces in order to win his war. And he fears that if a united NATO stands up against him, all Europe may remain free and life of the world may move forward into broad sunlit uplands. But if NATO falls, then the whole world, including the United States and Canada, from where I come from. Uh, I am from Windsor, Ontario, and I am the messenger unto the world that the Lord is saying unto all of you people, stop it, <laughs> peace be still. Uh, and uh, But if people will not listen, they will sink into the abyss of the new age, the new dark age that has been made much more sinister by the lights of perverted nuclear science. So Churchill urged all people of freedom, banner of hope, to brace themselves up by their duties of peace. And by doing this, uh, the wise shall bear themselves up so that in the future people will be saying that this was of in these days of the end of war, as it has been known, will become uh, the finest hour when the British Empire and even the Commonwealth can last for a thousand years in peace, exactly as it has been foretold by our arising golden kingdom age of love that uh, the prophet John Lennon so nicely prophesied in his beautiful prophecy of peace that he lovingly called Imagine. And so know that in this hour, it was foretold by Daniel of the lion's den in Daniel 11. It was, uh, it was now therefore easy to see that the war-torn coal mine of Ukraine is like a canary in Putin's uh, hellish battle between tyranny and liberty. That is also a war between freedom and slavery. And that shall either bring forth either the end to all peace or the absolute end to all war. Uh, after, after this rocket war that will commence, if people will not believe what is ahead, if the rats will not become the mice, we're going places. And... Um, this is therefore a battle between right and wrong, good and bad, righteousness and evil. And as this rages on, it'll become days of black and white, and there shall be no in-betweens. Uh, for as it is written, the weeds cannot grow with the wheat anymore, exactly as Christ has foretold in the word of God. And nor is there any doubt at all that this World War Z of our world's newest Vlad the Impaler, um, now he has exalted himself into being the place of being a monster of monsters. Um, because this is the foretold war of communist zombies. That is a fitting name, World War Z. A war, world war against dead zombies of love. Um, and because they shall now and are fighting tooth and toenail against all those who are alive in love. Um, so it's time for all the that will have passion as a child, moving as a child in order to be born again, that we need to all of us to stretch our hearts longing for greater boundaries within these foretold latter days of the Lord's most furious refiner's fire of change. Uh, for in these days of the biblical prophecies map being open, it's already most clear that it's absolutely necessary for people to be free, for them to be able to choose the ways of peace, uh, since slaves are only forced into the hottest flames of hell's lack of peace 
uh, where they could never really, where they never really wanted to go. And so people, if you're tired of going places that you don't want to go, let all people born of love now embrace the utter truth that peace can never be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. And let such wise ones shine as the sun as they hug the wisest truth that declares that the truest peace in this world isn't just the absence of conflict, but it's the presence of justice. And it's time for justice. And so do not be afraid, people. Believe in God's mercy. And he will cut these days short. And as it is written in Jeremiah 30, 24, he shall return his terrifying anger. So let all the world embrace Ronald Reagan's definition when he taught that peace isn't the absence of conflict. Instead, it's the ability to handle conflict by peaceful means. So hear now the, the lamb roaring as the Lion of Zion as he rightly declares that it's finally the approaching kingdom age time of the end of mankind's craziest insanity of war. And it is time to beat the sword into the sickle evermore. It is time to really be a believer. And if we're going to be a believer, then we have to believe that the Lord is all merciful. So unto the whole world, don't pull out your hair. <laughs> Have a little faith. Be anxious for nothing and in all things give praise unto our beloved because in the end, uh, this world is not going to end. It is prophesied that even though the word says that um, there would be no birds, no fish, no mankind left on planet Earth, that the Lord has promised uh, in Matthew 24, these days shall be cut short, so praise him evermore. Love you all.